Hey everyone, welcome to a Render Spaz video tutorial. And uh, today we're going to show you how to create turnable animation for your 3D models. And you can use this for your demo reel and uh, make these guys look pretty flashy. So let's uh, get to it. And uh, I'm going to start going by the uh, top view here. And let's go down in our list. And we want to go to our uh, extended um, primitives here. And we're just going to select a chamfer cylinder. Drag this out. Okay, now another thing that we want to do here is make sure that everything is centered to the grid. So if you right click here on the bottom, you'll get everything to center. <clears throat> okay. I'll just drag the floor down a bit. And we just got to have this kind of display. And something that, uh, and something that you can just turn this uh, pretty much a turntable. Uh, so that you can um, rotate this model around. So now we're just going to go around here and play with the uh, fillets a bit. Uh, and we want to just increase our um, how much uh, polygons we got here. So we just want to make sure that the segments are quite high. Because I'm not going to use any turbo smoothing or nothing for this. So. Um, that should do it. So we've got a nice little beveled edge around the corner there. Okay, so I'm going to go with uh, creating a um, beaver material here. Um, before I do that, I'm just going to okay. And let's go down um, to our list here. And uh, that's because I went to the you know, let's just actually we just go to our side panel here and click the ray material, get that up, we'll drag it into the uh, viewport here, and let's go with the black. It's going to cause floor, it reflects, let's get some reflect values, let's make a nice shiny looking floor, and we'll doll it up a bit. All right, the Fresno will put uh, round two. Yeah, no camera in. Okay, so now we're gonna go up to the top view here. We're just gonna drag out a camera, V-ray camera that is. And uh, you have the option if you don't want to have it targeted, but you know what? I think it's probably better. So now I'm going to target this. Okay, so let's uh, bring it out. And we want to make sure our target and our camera is center as well to the grid. Well, we want it to be centered, and then we're going to drag out our camera here so that it's looking at the vehicle. Okay, so I'm just the center of the uh, your target there. So this way, we're completely center. Nothing's going to be... Uh, looking strange as it rotates. Okay, So we want to make sure we uh, lock our um, rotation. And we're just going to drag ourselves up just a bit. Just so we got a little bit more of a top angle on the car <clears throat> or whatever object it is you're using. I've just decided to use the uh, Mercedes-Benz model I've created here. So this is pretty much goes with anything. And then we're just going to Go to the side here. Let's uh, get the camera view here in this viewport, and then just drag down the camera a bit till you get a view that you like, something like this. And select the camera and the target. Just drag them both down at the same time. Okay, we're going to call this base. <clears throat> so now we have the base in the car. So that's pretty much uh, all we need here. And um, so what I've done was I changed the, um, our uh, timeline to 200 frames. Okay, it's up to you whatever frame that you want to use. 
and we use 200 and it gives us a nice smooth uh, animation. It's not too quick. So when we spin this guy around, once you got to make sure you're locked so it's uh, 360 degrees uh, at the last frame here. Uh, so when you hit play, you get a nice rotation. Okay, and this should be loopable because it's loopable because it's a uh, linear keyframes. So linear is it's the they have no curves to them. So if you look here, uh, it's completely straight. Okay, uh, so I just want to make sure that these are linear. And there you have it. Because that way, if it's linear, it's going to loop. It's going to loop from, uh, from the zero to two hundred keyframes. It's going to uh, pass over as, uh, and not have any slowdown or strange little sk skippy kind of uh, animation there. All right, so now let's get some lighting in. Uh, I'm going to use a V-Ray uh, light, but we're going to go with a dome light. So we just want it to be simple here. Uh, so this way it renders quite quickly. Uh, resolution to this, uh, well, I'm going to use an HDR, so I'm thinking about 2048. Some division is about 60, and that will give us some uh, less noise and make sure that it's not showing it in the uh, viewport. So we'll make it invisible. Let's go to our render. Let's take a look at what we have so far. So right now we just have a V-Ray dome light just lighting this guy uh, by its diffuse pretty much. I mean, it does have a little bit of reflection. Um, but we're not going to want to really go with this. We're quite dark and we have, uh, just don't really have anything going on. It's kind of quite bland. So like, let's um, see what we can do to make this thing a little bit... Uh, nicer looking. Um, so I'm going to go over to um, our standard uh, lights and I'm going to drop in a target direct light. Okay, I'm going to use this as just kind of more like, in a way like a sun, but um, just a way to show off the, to get some nice shadowing in there. All right, so we're going to keep this quite simple and uh, Go over down to the shadows and make sure that we check on V-Ray shadows. Okay, uh, look down here, whoops, get it back up. Multiply it at one, and come down. Uh, let's maybe make it a little bit like a sun color. Not too dramatic here, but just enough to get a glint of that yellow. And then uh, we're going to bring up our hotspot a bit so that it's covering our subject there. And we're going to hit overshoot this way um, and just pretty much uh, lights everything here. Okay? Everything in the scene. And then one more thing. I just want to come down. Let's make sure we have area shadows checked. And let's go with, uh, let's say, 50. 50 all the way down here on the U, the V, and the W size. This way I'll spread out these shadows a bit and make them a little bit softer. So let's we'll render that and see what we have. This is a good bit of difference here. So we're starting to get our light uh, hitting the side of the car now, which is looking really nice on your object. That just kind of brings out some, it just gives it a little bit more definition. Right, I'm going to stop this up really quick and I noticed one thing that our camera is really dark. So what we're going to do is select our camera, come down over into the white balance. I'm going to make it neutral. The f-stop, uh, I'm going to bring it into 1.5. It's a good one I like to go with. Uh, shutter, I might just bring this down a bit to like 180-ish. 180. Hit render. Let's see what we got. Let's see if that fixes things. So we yeah, have brightened it up quite a bit. We're starting to get to the spot that we want here. But I'm going to check off make sure I don't display. I um, just want to display our, not the uh, high gamma there. We're just going to go with uh, V-Ray camera. So right now we got some nice contrast uh, to our scene right now. And you can almost go with this, but there's a couple more adjustments I want to make. But you can see we're getting a really nice... Um, Highlights, we're getting some uh, just nice tone to the car now or to your subject. So, what we want to do now is go to our render setup. Um, okay, 
Okay, so we're just getting some, uh, some of our properties all set up. I'm going to go with a brute force, and we're going to also go with the light cache. Subdivisions are going to bring it up to around 24, so I'm going quite high. Um, this way it's, it's going to make sure that I have no noise, or very low noise if that. Okay, we're going to move up through the tabs, um, setting some, actually, yeah, let's go down our, actually our, uh, we'd like to go to our color mapping down there as well, we're going to fix that, but uh, also I see that we need to change our adaptive image sample, so we're going to bring that to, uh, let's see, about 8, noise threshold, um, bring it down to 003. 0.003. And anyway, we should have a nice crisp render, but um, for that, I still have to do the color map. I forgot about that guy. So we're going to make sure that um, when we're doing that, we put sub pixel mapping on, and we're going to go with color mapping and gamma. And that's going to give us our gamma back. So this way, we have control of our curves uh, in the post processing that we can uh, do some color grading to this. It gives us a lot of room to play with here. That's why it looks so gray at this moment. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, we'll just go over to our um, control panel here, our little uh, color corrections. We're just going to bring down the uh, black levels, and we're going to then raise a little bit of our our whites, and our, so that we can bring up our highlights, and then we just get more of a contrast uh, look here, and um, that's starting to. Um, Go in a direction that we were that we're looking for here. So um, I'm pretty happy with this, um, but I am missing one big part, and that's uh, I believe we're going to need to get some HDR lighting into this guy so that uh, it just you know stands out a little more. It just looks a little bit more interesting. So the site that I like to go to is Open Footage. I'm sure if you've heard this site, um, but if you haven't, it's an excellent site for HDRs. Uh, other and also other kinds of assets that you may need, uh, but HDRs are one of the big ones here, and um, they have a wide selection of different kinds of HDRs from exteriors and interiors. Uh, and you can go through these and pick the one that you like. Um, but uh, this is a pretty amazing site, so I'm going to go over and find one that I think that would fit for our turntable here. So, looking down, here we go. So you got selections of HDR uh, low res and you got the high res. But we're just gonna select the low res for this. Uh, you can go with the high res a lot. It's a lot. Uh, it's a bigger of a file. You just fill out this information here and um, download. And I pretty much have it here, so I just set up an V-rate HDR on file. Okay, down, go down the list there and you can find it. V-rate HDR I file there and just uh, map it in. Um, once I have that all set up, I'm going to go to sphere, spherical mode and um, apply it to this dome light. Okay. So now we're just going to just drag and drop it into our uh, texture slot as an instance. I'm going to hit render. And now look at the, the big difference here between what we used to have. We have some nice clouds in the windows. Uh, so this is really nice just to always set up these HDRs for your models. It, it can be even uh, whatever model, if you have characters or if you have uh, just miscellaneous objects that you want to uh, display on the turntable, use a HDR to give the extra punch. So there you have it guys. You've created now a turntable animation that you can use for your 3D models and now uh, add this to your demo reel or personal um, projects. And I uh, hope you learned something from this video, and you can go forward and create amazing turntables. So that concludes this video, and thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned for more videos, more tutorial videos, more content, and more premium stuff. Uh, thank you very much, guys, and we'll see you later.